What's up guys, it's Joanna here, founder and CEO of Subwell, and this week I've seen a ton of stuff floating around on the internet about the new Adidas Prime X Strung V2. So I wanted to do a video previewing everything that we know about the shoe so far to give us all the details we need to assess whether this is gonna be one that we wanna to add to our rotation. So the Primex V2 is the second version of Adidas's Max Stack Illegal Super Foam shoe. The Primex Strong 1 has a 50 millimeter stack of Adidas's Light Strike Pro Foam, which is a super critical TPE compound. The Primex Strong V2 looks to build on that same platform by delivering a 50 millimeter stack of Light Strike Pro, but this time the key difference is that they're adding in two carbon fiber plates. And now I'm not entirely sure what the benefit is of having two carbon fiber plates instead of one as we have in traditional super shoes like the Nike Vaporfly, Adidas Pro 3, A6 Metaspeed, Edge and Sky, etc. The list goes on forever. The one carbon fiber plate formula has been perfected. And right now moving into two carbon fiber plates, I think we're gonna see more buoyancy, more responsiveness, more bounce from the Primex Strong V2. Now, the upper of the Primex Strong is this knit material. That's actually one of the things that this shoe is famous for, is having a really comfortable, almost cloth fabric-like upper, and they look to be retaining that same platform in the second version. The midsole of the Primex Strong V2 is where all the magic is gonna happen. I am really curious to see how this feels underfoot, but what we do know, it's that thick stack of Light Strike Pro, but from the pictures, we can see that there's some sort of cutout going on. I don't know if that's to reinforce the carbon fiber plates, and I'm also not sure if we're gonna have a full plate setup or the energy rod setup, which is what Adidas traditionally does in their shoes. So I have the Adidas Takumi Sen 8. Let me bring that out super quickly so we can see what these rods look like. I have the Adidas Takumi Sen 8 right here, and you can see these rods are reinforcing the midsole. This is Adidas's traditional super shoe setup. Instead of using a straight plate, which is like this, they use the carbon fiber rods, which are pronged and uh, allow for more flexibility throughout the platform and a more normal cornering feel when you're turning out there on races. Now, if we compare that to another super shoe like the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, you can see in this one, there's a full plate. It's just gonna be a straight platform within the midsole, and it's not gonna have the same amount of uh, flexibility that the Takumi Sen or the Primex Strung might have. With the Primex Strung, because it's gonna be a 50 millimeter stack height, I don't think that platform is gonna be flexible at all. So I think Adidas is saying, let's just reinforce it with all of the resilient, responsive, buoyant materials we can so that we just have the most propulsive ride possible. I did wanna briefly address the elephant in the room here, which is the legality of this shoe. So World Athletics set the standard a few years ago that to be considered race legal for a road race, shoes could only have a 40 millimeter stack height in the midsole and they can only have one carbon fiber plate. We've seen this influx of shoes in the market over the past few years that all have above 40 millimeter stack heights of this super foam that provides a very bouncy, responsive and efficient platform for runners. Where I stand, if you're a recreational runner and you wanna use one of these things, if that's gonna be what gets you out the door, if that's gonna be what motivates you to get that PR, to push yourself, to up your best, to get to the next level, then go ahead and do it. Technology is great because it can help us advance. One of the things that we do as a species that other species don't do is we push things forward and we continue to create and we continue to innovate and we continue to find what that next thing is that's gonna move society forward. In the world of running, that's carbon fiber plated shoes. I love that Adidas is pouring development dollars into this. It's great for the sport. I love to see new technology coming out and it'll be interesting to see how this does to you know the average recreational runner who can run a marathon between three hours and four hours. Is this gonna uh, help us shave 10 minutes off our PRs? Is this gonna help us shave 30 minutes off our PRs? Who knows, but it's all exciting and they're developments that I love to see in the world of performance running. 
Now, the Adidas Primex Strung is going to be positioned against those Max Stack illegal road racing and road running shoes. And those two main ones that we see on the market today are one, the New Balance SC Trainer, and two, the Asics Super Blast. The first version of the SC Trainer came out last year. I had the chance to run in it. It was not my favorite shoe because it was a bit on the heavier side, but what it did was it allowed you to run with a carbon fiber plate for propulsion on your easy day runs and on your traditional recovery and aerobic paces. The feel to it was super comfortable while also being bouncy. It's almost like if you took the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 and made it a little heavier and less nimble. It was very similar to that type of a feeling where you're gonna bounce along. The other one that Adidas is targeting with the new Primax Strong V2 is the ASIC Super Blast. That has a max stack of above 40 millimeters as well, and they combine their FF Blast Plus foam with their FF Turbo foam, which is in their racing shoes like the Edge and the Sky. The difference in the ASIC Super Blast versus the Strong from Adidas and the SC Trainer from New Balance is that the Super Blast does not use a plate to add rigidity and to add pop to the platform. Instead, it uses that FF Turbo Foam, which is a bit firmer, a bit harder, a bit denser than some other Super Foams in the market. So that gives the propulsion necessary to allow you to run those faster paces, like marathon pace effort and below in the Super Blast. It will be interesting to see what the ride is of the Strong V2, because I just saw that one of Adidas's pro athletes ran the Ironman marathon world record in this shoe. If we've got people running 230 marathons in this, is it gonna be the most versatile ride? I'm not sure, right? Would an A6 athlete pull for the Super Blast to run a 230 marathon? I don't think so. They'd probably go with a firmer, more reinforced platform. So that's leading me to believe that the ride of this is gonna be a bit more firm, a bit more speed oriented. And they're, I don't know what we're gonna call this category. Maybe it's the super duper shoe where we have 50 millimeter stack heights and two carbon plates. But I think that's the direction we're going in this one. It's not gonna be we're adding versatility and comfort. It's gonna be we're adding speed, responsiveness and bounciness so you can trampoline your way to your next race PR. All right guys, that is all we have for today on the Primax Strong V2. Thank you for watching. I'll be putting up another video when we have all the details, so follow along, subscribe, and check out Subwell for all the latest in the world of performance running footwear.